Hey, I just wanted to report on this discovery because I don't think that it really got much press. I didn't even hear about it, but it took place in March of this year, 2023, and it was a big discovery when some college students found ancient stone lionesses during a field trip in northern Israel. So I wanted to share this with you because I thought this was extraordinary and it also connects to the story that I told you about um, Beth Seda and how they think that they have now found the real true birthplace of Simon Peter, Andrew his brother, and Philip. Then they showed this discovery on Expedition Unknown with Josh Gates. I hope you got to see it. Um, I would have liked it if he had done a little bit more of the excavating there, but hopefully he'll go back. But this is just about um, this story about these lioness statues being found there in Israel. And it says, Israel is littered with archaeological finds and antiquities, but finding not one, but two lioness statues by accident is quite the achievement. Such is Israel. Take a walk. Find a lioness, or at least an ancient statue of one, discovered by chance at Ain Nashut in the Golan Heights. The lady lion was depicted nursing cubs. The artifact is quite weathered, after almost 2,000 years of exposure to the elements, and much is missing, but the identification is unmistakable, says Professor Mordecai Aviam of Kinneret College on the Sea of Galilee. In fact, this is the second serendipitous ancient lioness discovery with which Aviam is involved. This one was found at Ain Neshut, and the first was found in 2017 at El Araj, and potentially the site of the Jewish village of Bethsaida, and was preserved rather better. So El Araj is where the true Bethsaida is. There's no doubt about it in my mind. They found the Byzantine inscription where they said it was a dedication to Simon Peter. However, when you really think about it and look at it, I think that the inscription is really talking about Jesus because it, it says chief of the apostles. And even Simon Peter, even though he was an important person, the real chief the chief cornerstone of the church is Jesus Christ himself. So I think that their discovery of that inscription has to do with Jesus as the chief. And I just think it's incredible, but they're not really thinking like that. Um, this is really incredible. Both the lionesses were made of basalt, the black volcanic rock, is the default for construction and art in northern Israel, Avion points out. The Golan's volcanoes are extinct now. And I didn't even know they had volcanoes up there in the Golan. Fact is, Israel is littered with archaeological finds and antiquities, having been occupied for over a million years since before our species even arose. But finding not one, but two lioness statues by accident in different places is quite the achievement. Our story starts with Aviam, leading graduate students in the land of Israel studies, not archaeology per se, on a three-day journey to ancient Jewish villages in northern Israel. Every day we go to a number of ancient villages, observe the ruins, and examine what characterized the Jewish village as opposed to Christian ones of the time, Aviam explains. Jews and non-Jews lived in similar homes, but there are some differences, he adds. 
For instance, he elaborates that Jewish villages have a synagogue in the middle of the village, and Christian villages have a church, obviously. Jewish villages have mikvahs, and Christian ones have their own symbols, such as the cross, and so on. Probably baptismals, I would say. But the first site they visited last Wednesday, and this was written in March of this year, was Kirbet Majdukia, excavated by Dr. Mikhail Osband of the Kinneret College, presently Osband, and his team are excavating the village synagogue, which dates to Roman times, and lurking amid the unkept wild vegetation and stones on the ground, a student noticed a Roman coin. On the head side, it shows the profile of Emperor Gallienus and dates to the last days of the Jewish settlement. It's one of the latest coins on the site, Aviam adds, from about 260 CE. Gallienus ruled with his parent, Emperor Valerian, from 253 to 260, and then alone until the year 268 when he was murdered. The students were excited about the discovery of the coin. They could feel for themselves what an ancient coin actually feels like, Aviam says. And then he and the grad students traveled onward in their bus to a site in Katzrin and then on to Ein Neshut. It was there that Aviam decided to do an exercise and sent the students to wander the site and gathering information, recording what they see, taking pictures with their phones, and writing it up. Afterwards, we sat together, and students described what they had found, he says, generally previously discovered artifacts such as oil presses and the like. And one student said, We found something that looks like a carving of an animal, the professor says. My heart stopped. No, the student had not brought the carving of said animal with them. It was heavy, Zvia Dahan explained, but they had photographed it. I couldn't believe my eyes, Aviam recalls. They didn't actually remember exactly where they had seen it and had to go find it again, but happily for posterity they did after some minutes, and the rest is ancient history. It was at the bottom of the hill, below the synagogue, Aviam says. Maybe somebody tried to steal it or take it previously. And, lest exactly that happen, the team decided to remove it from the site, with the only snag being that, being made of basalt, the thing was heavy. With hindsight, it weighed 28 kilograms. They considered carrying it on an improvised stretcher, but then a particularly muscular student named Lael Mamoni volunteered to carry it on his back, and he did. Wow. The team called the Israel Antiquities Authority to advise it of this sequence of events. Such lion representations are not rare in the sense that numerous examples of lion and lioness statues have been found in the context of Jewish antiquity and at Ein Neshut in particular. The other ones are at the Katzrin Museum, which houses finds from this site. Jewish history is replete with lion symbolism, while no sign of any such affinity has been found in early Christian villages. The Ein Neshut Synagogue had the biggest collection of lion and lioness sculptures found so far, Aviam says. They had a place of honor in art during the late Roman times and Byzantine times, as did the eagle. 
But when the Land of Israel Studies students personally found this one, they roared with happiness, he observes. The important thing is how excited the students were. It was a wonderful example of what our department at the college does. So, Dr. Mordecai Aviam, he took a photograph of the basalt lioness found in 2017 at El Araj. And this is the true Bethsaida. I have no doubt in my mind since they found the ancient church there with the inscription that I believe is actually to Jesus, the chief of the apostles. Whereas they said that it was Simon Peter that was the chief of the apostles. But remember, the Bible says that Jesus is the chief cornerstone of the heavenly temple. Now we see that clearly about Jesus being the chief in Ephesians 2, starting in verse 19. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ, or Yeshua the Messiah himself, being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. So right there it says that Jesus the Messiah, or Christ himself, being the chief cornerstone. And so would it surprise you that at Bethsaida where Simon Peter, Andrew, and Philip were from, that was their hometown, that they would build, not them, but later on a church would be built on the spot where they lived, and that church has just been excavated, and this inscription says, Chief of the Apostles. It's not talking about Simon Peter. It's talking about Jesus as the chief. So that's an exciting thing that the Lord's revealed to me about the inscription and I just am really thrilled to share it. Of course, everybody knows that verse in Ephesians, but to piece it together with the inscription when they said it was about Simon Peter, and knowing that it was about the Messiah himself, is something that they didn't say. So I'm just sharing it now because I'm excited about it. And then finding the lioness there is so thrilling. So take a look at this picture credit goes to Dr. Mordecai Aviam. He's the one doing the excavation at Bethsaida that I talked about in my other video. So I'm going to show you this basalt lioness found in 2017 at El Araj, known as the real Bethsaida. Now there's quite a few Bible verses about the lioness, but this verse in Hosea 13, starting in verse 4, is really interesting. And this is the Lord speaking, okay? This is God speaking. And he says, Yet I am the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt, and thou shalt know no God but me, 
for there is no Savior beside me. Now, when Jesus was a baby, of course, he was told by the angel to go to the land of Egypt, and he came back into the land of Israel, which it says twice, which shows that the Lord was the God from the land of Egypt. He was their Savior, and besides their Yeshua, there is no other. I did know thee in the wilderness, in the land of great drought. According to their pasture, so were they filled. They were filled, and their heart was exalted. Therefore have they forgotten me. Therefore I will be unto them as a lion. As a leopard by the way, I will observe them. I will meet them as a bear that is bereaved of her whelps, and will rend the call of her heart. And there will I devour them like a lion. The wild beast shall tear at them. And then we see God's mercy. O Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself, but in me is thine help. I will be thy king. Where is any other that may save thee in all thy cities, and thy judges of whom thou saidst, Give me a king and princes? I gave thee a king in mine anger, and took him away in my wrath. The iniquity of Ephraim is bound up, his sin is hid. The sorrows of a travailing woman shall come upon him. He is an unwise son, for he should not stay long in the place of the breaking forth of children. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be thy plagues. O grave, I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall be hid from mine eyes. And of course, Jesus is represented by the lion of the tribe of Judah. Now that verse was specifically talking about the ancient monarchy of Israel. And we see in Ezekiel 19, um, it says, Israel degraded, and this was part of history, Ezekiel 19, verse 1. Moreover, take up a lamentation for the princes of Israel and say, What is your mother, a lioness? She lay down among the lions, among the young lions. She nourished her cubs. And this statue that they just found has the lioness with the cubs. She brought up one of her cubs, and he became a young lion. He learned to catch prey, and he devoured men. The nations also heard of him. He was trapped in their pit, and they brought him with chains to the land of Egypt. When she saw that, she waited, that her hope was lost. She took another of her cubs and made him a young lion. He roved amongst the lions and became a young lion and learned to catch prey. He devoured men. He knew their desolate places and laid waste their cities. The land with its fullness was desolated. By the noise of his roaring, then the nations set against him from the provinces on every side and spread their net over him. He was trapped in their pit. They put him in a cage with chains and brought him to the king of Babylon. They brought him in nets that his voice should no longer be heard on the mountains of Israel. Your mother was like a vine in your bloodline, planted by the waters, fruitful and full of branches because of many waters. She had strong branches for scepters of rulers. She towered in stature among the thick branches, and she was seen in her height amid the dense foliage. But she was plucked up in fury. She was cast down to the ground, and the east wind dried her fruit. Her strong branches were broken and withered. The fire consumed them, and now she is planted in the wilderness in a dry and thirsty land. Fire has come out from a rod of her branches and devoured her fruit, so that she has no strong branch, a scepter for ruling. This is a lamentation, and has become a lamentation. Okay, so she played the scarlet harlot against God, and she was represented as a lioness 
and her cubs. And we see in this scripture that the ancient monarchy that's represented by the royal scepter um, that's dried up and withered, this is what Jesus was demonstrating when he healed the man in Israel with the withered arm. It was representing that the ancient monarchy was dried up and withered and also when he cursed the fig tree because it had no fruit on it and this was representative of the ancient monarchy and those rulers that were fattening themselves there with riches from their trade from you know it started with the um, naval ships of King Solomon and he collected uh, you know wealth through trade and trade follows the bride so he would have all these concubines and everything but specifically we see in the scripture in Ezekiel 19 when he's talking about a lamentation for the princes of Israel he says what is your mother, a lioness? She lay down among the lions. Among the lions, she nourished her cubs. So here's a lioness found in the El Araj Bethsaida discovery of artifacts. And it represents that Israel was like the lioness. How profound for this, these two lioness discoveries to be found at the time when the Lord had revealed that to me in Revelation, the restoration of the ancient monarchy of the Davidic dynasty about to happen. And I believe that person is going to be King Charles III based on everything in my other videos, which I won't go over in this video because it's too lengthy. but. I had real thorough videos on that subject and a lot of you know it from watching. So this shows that they will put another king like another King Saul on the throne, an earthly king. And then the Lord Jesus, who is really the true king with the royal scepter of God, and he will sit upon that throne and rule. So Israel's eyes were blinded in part until the fullness of the Gentiles comes in. And when the last king of Judah was exiled to Babylon, his eyes were blinded, okay? And when you have the Antichrist with the, uh, you know, blinded eyes and the withered arm, it's representative of the destruction of the ancient monarchy of the kings of Judah and Israel. So I wanted to clarify that because I, I said it in one video, but I don't always repeat the same things. And so I needed to say that again because somebody commented about the Antichrist will have a withered arm and a blinded eye. So this is representative of what happened to the last king of Judah and so their right arm they rule with their scepter in their hand and the right arm was withered meaning that the monarchy was going to be no more and they have not had a king sitting on that throne in Israel for all of these centuries you know they came back from Babylon and there was no king ruling ever after so the true rightful heir will descend from heaven and that is the chief the cornerstone of the apostles and they make up the foundation of the heavenly temple because we are all representative of the white stones of the temple and this is why the lord gives us a white stone with a new name on it that only he knows so this is really a thrilling discovery. Um, I don't know if you heard about the lioness discoveries, but truly this is representative of what is getting ready to happen with them putting another king on the throne. And the scripture that I just read to you about Israel being a lioness. And, you know, she took a king 
that God gave her, but it didn't work out too well for them. So the same thing is going to repeat itself. And just an incredible revelation from the Lord. And I just truly hope that I can say something to Dr. Aviam about the um, inscription. So anyway, this is really exciting. I'm really thrilled about what God is doing. And, you know, God puts people in your path or he takes them out of your path for a reason. And I'm praying that God puts the right people in my path and removes the wrong ones out of my path that, you know, block this testimony from going forward or block you from being able to speak about these things. I think it's thrilling and totally incredible that, you know, God is the one who is representative of the lion and you know Israel is like the lioness with the cubs so he is their mercy and he's going to come and take that throne from the last king that they restore the monarchy to and he's going to come down and rule as the rightful heir so I wanted to share this and I just thought it was really neat love the lioness I've always been a lion lover <laughs> a cat lover and check this out <laughs> when I was at the zoo down in Texas I got this little lion and the lion exhibit was closed um, you know I mean they had some cats but they had removed the lions and I did not get to see them but now they have a brand new uh, exhibit but now they have brought the lions back and I can't wait to be able to go see them hopefully soon and the funny thing is is I got a bear and a lion and I didn't realize it until I came back from my grandmother's funeral that King David killed a lion and a bear and I happened to get a lion and a bear. So here they are hanging on my shoulder. <laughs> so this just kind of represented King David. <laughs> and I thought that was really super neat because I didn't think about it at the time. But, you know, I don't have any pets here, so this is kind of like my little pets. <laughs> The Miami Herald wrote this about the story. Walking along a sloping hill in northern Israel, two students spotted a large gray rock. Looking closer, they realized this wasn't just any rock. Two students, Svia Dahan and Michael Benish, stumbled upon an unusually shaped rock and thought it could be a carving, school officials said. Thinking the stone too heavy to move, the pair photographed the potential find and kept going and they said we found something and it looks like a carving of an animal <laughs> Aviam's heart just about stopped and they went to check it out so it was really a neat thing I decided I'm going to add this to the story because this one um, is by David Israel and was posted November 22nd of 2017 and this is the 1,320 pound lioness statue discovered near the Kinneret which is the Sea of Galilee. The relief statue of a lioness carved in a basalt rock was recently discovered in a pile of debris that had been excavated by a tractor from the Bet Habek excavation site by the northern Kinneret. It is estimated that the statue was placed at the entrance to a Jewish synagogue that operated there or at the entrance to another significant structure from the time the site was known as the lost Roman city of Julius, formerly the village of Bethsaida, which according to Christian tradition was the home of Jesus' apostles, Simon Peter, Andrew, and Philip. The age of the statue is estimated at more than 2,000 years. Two researchers who were touring the area noticed in one of their dirt piles removed by the tractor an unusual looking stone. As they approached it and cleaned it up a little, they noticed the outline of a lion. 
the archaeologist Mark Turnag and Eli Shukran contacted the director of excavations at the site on behalf of the Kinneret Academic College, Dr. Mordecai Aviam, who arrived at the scene. It turned out to be a magnificent statue of a carved lioness in a large basalt block weighing 1,320 pounds, Dr. Aviam related, with a quick effort, a truck with a crane was brought over and with careful and painstaking work, the statue was raised, loaded onto the truck and transported to safety. Dr. Aviam added, the lioness statue is completely whole, starting with the short mane, the big fangs, the tongue sticking out, and even the carved tail along the hind legs. He added that the statue is very similar to statues of lions and lionesses that have been discovered in synagogues in the Golan Heights, which is why it seems that in this case, too, it is a remnant of a Jewish synagogue. However, since there is also the possibility that this was the location of the lost city of Julius and Bethsaida, which they left out, the, the statue may have originated in another magnificent structure which to me would be the church that was built over the home of Simon Peter and Andrew and probably Philip. And they found that inscription from that church. Last July, archaeologists from the Kinneret College in Israel and Nyack College in New York completed excavations at El Arage on the northern shore of the Sea of Galilee, which has long been considered a possible location of ancient Bethsaida, a.k.a. Ancient Julius, which the Romans renamed it, which is mentioned in the writings of first century Jewish scholar, historian, and hagiographer Flavius Josephus, born Yosef ben Matiahu. So I just wanted to get that dig recorded on here and show you the lioness from Bethsaida and then you heard the story about the students finding the other lioness. To me, finding this now is a sign that Israel is about to pick a messiah, an earthly king, and we know who that is because I've talked about it a million times. So, I don't know, but let's hope that their eyes are open and the King of Kings comes down and reigns soon and very soon because we're going to see the King at his glorious appearing. Good night for now. Hope you enjoyed this story and the other story of the lioness, the two lioness statues.